So there's a wrap for the Carolina Panthers regular season, and they finished the season five and twelve. Matt Rule's second year in a row with five wins, and a lot of fans out there are looking for blood. They want Matt Rule to get the X. They want him out of there. They see the writing on the wall. They feel like he's in over his head, and they think they just want him out of here. I know Joe Brady was fired during the season because they wanted to shake things up, but that really made no difference on the offensive side as things continue to crash and burn. Jeff Nixon was the interim offensive coordinator, but he doesn't seem like to be a long-term solution. So Matt Rule is going to have a huge decision to make. All the pressure is going to be on Matt Rule going into year three to get things right. Even though there are progress on the defensive side, the offense tends to lack. And with this being an offensive-driven lead, there's no excuse for offense to be that bad. So all the reports that are coming out are saying that Matt Rule will be back, but he will need to make some moves. Jay Glazer actually reported that Matt Rule is not completely safe, but it's going to be hinging on the fact that he needs to hire a rock star offensive coordinator in order to save his job. Now, what does rock star mean? I don't know, but listen to the clip right here. I'm Will Tell. Matt Rule, I know it's put out there that he's safe. Not so fast. Matt Rule has to hire a rock star offensive coordinator for him to actually save his job, and he's been reaching out to some of those candidates this week. Now, Jay Glazer, you can say what you want. I mean, because Adam Schefter reported that Matt Rule is safe, but Jay Glazer seems to be plugged in with the team. We'll talk about that a little bit more, but in this video overall, we're going to talk about some potential offensive coordinator names that got floated around in reports that came out yesterday, along with how they fit with his team. Do I think there will be a good decision to make these guys on this team and what it means for the future going forward? And we're starting right now. Yo, what up? It's Aaron Duncan here with the Necessary Bluntness Sports Talk. I start off every video by saying, what up, though? And here on the Necessary Bluntness, I do recap and analysis of the Carolina Panthers in particular. And I cover the whole NFL, too. So if you want to see more videos about the Panthers, the NFL, draft content through podcasts, live streams, video analysis, and film breakdowns, you know what I'm saying, all of the above like I do here, go ahead and subscribe button below and the bell icon. The bell icon is going to make sure you get a notification because sometimes when you just hit the subscribe button, you don't get notified when this stuff comes out. And so you got to hit the bell icon. That way you make sure you get all videos all of them and go ahead give the video a thumbs up too because it doesn't really cost you a thing and it really helps me out in the algorithm gets the message out and we can all talk about this stuff because us panthers fans we're going through a lot of pain and we got to stick together it's going to be an eventful off season so if you want to stay up to date on everything that's going on you got to subscribe below hit the bell icon so we talked about Jay Glazer, and Jay Glazer is plugged in with the team in my opinion he he has a source inside the team now who that source is i can't confirm or deny but my hunch tells me that it's steve drummond Steve Drummond, the head guy, the head PR guy, the head guy of communications. He's been around for a while. He's been here before Matt Rule. He's been here with the Panthers for as long as I can remember. And if he's the PR guy, he has his ear to the streets when it comes to Tepper and any coach or any owner that's on this team. I mean, if Jay Glazer is the plug for him, you got to give Jay Glazer a little bit of credibility on that sense. So I will be interested to see how this offensive coordinator process goes. Now, with this rock star uh, quote unquote word that was used, who are the potential candidates? And we're hearing some reports that possibly that Jay Gruden or Bill O'Brien or Kevin O'Connell from the Rams are potential replacements. Now, if you're a Panthers fan and you hear the name Bill O'Brien, Amongst the NFL fans and stuff, you get a sour taste of your mouth because he's known for trading DeAndre Hopkins, uh, trading for David Johnson and all this crap. And then obviously the situation with Deshaun Watson and pretty much bare boning the whole franchise and making crazy decisions as a GM. I, a lot of people are skeptical because of that. But for me, I think from a bigger picture, if you take away the personnel power that he had in, with the Texans, they actually had some success. They've been to the playoffs multiple times. Obviously, he had elite quarterback play with Deshaun Watson, but Deshaun Watson was a rookie at some point, and him and Bill O'Brien worked together and helped him ascend to where he's at now. Now, how does Bill O'Brien even fit with the Panthers? That's to be said. Now, Bill O'Brien, of course, is a Penn State guy. That's his connection with Matt Rule. A lot of people are saying that, okay, are they only going after Bill O'Brien because they're still trying to make a play for Deshaun Watson? They already had the former quarterback coach and Sean Ryan on the staff right now that used to coach Deshaun Watson. Are they trying to bring in Bill O'Brien to bring back the game and possibly attract uh, Deshaun Watson? Obviously, Deshaun Watson has that no trade clause. So he can choose exactly where he goes. So are they putting the groundwork for that? Who knows? Because Deshaun Watson, who knows what his relationship with Bill O'Brien is after he stripped the team of all their weapons? I don't know. I can't confirm or deny that. Obviously, there's still a lot of unknowns when it comes to Deshaun Watson and his legal matters, but I think we'll get a lot clearer picture within the next couple of weeks when it comes to Deshaun Watson if they want to make that trade. Nevertheless, Bill O'Brien, obviously, he spent some time in New England and then as a head coach for the Texans, and now he's the offensive coordinator for the Alabama Crimson Tide. 
Great offense, by the way. Great prospects when it comes to the receivers and the quarterback and the running back position and great weapons to work with. The college game was not really a not really a, a, a permanent end game for Bill O'Brien. Most guys that go play offensive coordinator for Nick Saban, they either go on to be a head coach on the college level or they bounce back to the NFL. We saw this happen with Steve Sarkeesian. He made that jump, and now it's, he's, he has a head coaching position now. Obviously, Sarkeesian went to the Falcons first. He was with uh, Dan Quinn, of course, and Dan Quinn got fired. So, Bill, uh, excuse me, Sarkeesian came back to the college level. Now he's the head coach. The thing about Bill O'Brien that I think is not the worst thing in the world is because Bill O'Brien has been known to be kind of a a, a, a tough guy or an a-hole to keep it PG. And we need somebody with some backbone on this roster. We've been hearing reports that Matt Rule is a, a guy that only wants yes men around him. He wants to control every little thing, micromanage and stuff like that. And most people don't seem to be standing up to Matt Rule and having a little bit of backbone and spine and going back and pushing back with him because, one, they may not be as experienced as him, or two, they just don't want to lose their job. Bill O'Brien has accomplished things that Matt Rule has not accomplished. As bad and as scrutinized as Bill O'Brien may be, he still has more on his resume than Matt Rule. And he has NFL experience. He's worked with excellent head coaches like Bill Belichick. So he can bark back and talk back to Matt, Matt Rule because he knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing there. So I'm not exactly opposed to that because we need some adults in the room when it comes to the offensive side of the football. Now, moving on to Jay Gruden. I do not like this name at all. I do not like Jay Gruden, mainly because, yes, he came to power because he helped uh, Andy Dalton and A.J. Green and that offense do some things, ended up getting the head coach position for the Washington football team. It was the Redskins back then. He worked with Kirk Cousins, helped Kirk Cousins parlay that into a good contract with the Vikings. So there was some steady quarterback play there, and many, many people think that he has that background to, to be able to help quarterbacks, but I still don't like it. You know, and then you have the, the the controversy that came out from the Washington football team emails. Obviously, his brother John Gruden was outed, but there were some reports about some of the emails that Jay Gruden even sent. Those type of scandals and that type of mentality and type of uh, 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 boys club, I guess you want to call it, that they were talking about. That's not somebody I want to touch with just from a morality standpoint, but even from a football standpoint, strictly, I'm not a huge Jay Gruden fan. I'm really not. And so that's not a type of guy that I want if we're going to be ushering in a new quarterback, especially a young quarterback. I don't want him touching the young quarterback and helping him develop that. But the third candidate that has been emerged that they're going to try to target is Kevin O'Connell. Kevin O'Connell is now as the offensive coordinator for the uh, Los Angeles Rams under Sean McVay. And we've seen assistance from the Sean McVay system go on and have success. Now, we've seen pretty much anybody that's had a chance to even shake hands with Sean McVay and work for him get an opportunity to either be a head coach or offensive coordinator. And guys like Matt LaFleur, obviously, in Green Bay has had has some success. Zach Taylor has got, gone and do his own thing in Cincinnati. And then, obviously, Mike LaFleur, the little brother of Matt LaFleur, he's with the Jets. Now, the Jets are yet to be seen about what they're actually going to turn out to. But you see the success and the pattern of these guys that have these systems. They go off, do their own thing. But the common denominator with these guys is they have a quality quarterback. That's the, that's the key to success with these guys. They need a quality quarterback. And you see even Sean McVay went and got his guy, Matt Stafford. And that's something that the Panthers do not do. But for O'Connell to come, a lot of people may have the question like, okay, if, if McConnell is if O'Connell is an offensive coordinator for the Rams who are going to the playoffs, have a chance to win a Super Bowl ring, why would he come to a screw-up organization like the Carolina Panthers? And the answer is that O'Connell doesn't call plays. That's the thing. O'Connell does not call plays. Sean McVay is the guy that calls plays, but O'Connell is inter, uh, is a very big part of the game plan. He helps put the game plan together. He puts the scheme together and stuff like that, and he helps coaches under Sean McVay. But Sean McVay is the ultimate one on the microphone talking to the quarterback in the helmet. But he would get a chance to call plays here in Carolina. Now, a lot of people may be skeptical because Joe Brady didn't have any play calling experience when he came here, and you saw how that worked out. But Joe Brady did not. He, he worked at LSU. In, on the college level. He was very inexperienced and young. O'Connell worked under one of the great minds like Sean McVay. He was on the headset hearing the play calls. I think that O'Connell could actually do something. I think he could do something because all these other assistant coaches that Sean McVay had weren't necessarily the play callers either. And they worked under Sean McVay and they've had success when they went and called plays themselves. There was a little bit of a learning curve, obviously, with guys like LaFleur and Taylor, but they ended up getting it together. So O'Connell could come to Carolina, call plays himself, be able to take some ownership of this offense, and then be able to have some success possibly with us. Now, I think the key for any coach that wants to come in off as coordinator is going to be getting a quarterback because it's going to be hard to convince a guy to come in and take their first opportunity or a new opportunity as an offensive coordinator under a lame duck coach. If they think Matt Rule is going to be looking over their shoulder like all these reports say about him being micromanager of everything in the football team, 
they're not going to want to play, especially professionals that have experience with successful coaches. They're not going to come work for some amateurs like Matt Rule who don't have that much experience on a pro level. Nobody wants to be micromanaged like that in their job, and I don't think any offensive coordinator that we try to go after will be. If his Obviously, if the job for Matt Rule uh, relies on us getting a successful offensive coordinator, he's going to have to shift some things on his uh, mindset and mentality and – I mean, it is what it is. Matt Rule said that he wants to run the ball, but that's not the way that the league works anymore. It's a passing league. Yes, you can use the run in a wide zone to get things going, but most of that is just used to set up play action, crossing routes, passing routes and stuff like that, and simple quick passes to set up the running game. It's not a running league anymore. This is not 1992. You know what I'm saying? I don't know who Matt Rule thinks he is, Bill Parcells or whatever, but this is not 1992. You have to be able to throw the ball. So a guy like McConnell would be a great choice to me. I don't know if he'll be able to get it here. We do have the checkbook, obviously, with David Tepper, and he would get the opportunity to call plays. So I would not be opposed to doing that. I would not be opposed to Bill O'Brien just because of the backbone and the spine he actually has to be able to clap back and Matt Rule if they go at it. But who knows? Because Bill O'Brien may not want to clash heads with a guy like that, even though they may be homeboys going back to the Penn State days. Nevertheless, let me know how you feel about these names that I talked about today in this video. Are you opposed to any of these guys? Who would be on your radar if you got to choose? Are you happy or satisfied with these names that are floating around? Let me know down below in the comments. But make sure you are subscribed if you have not. I am Aaron Duncan signing off for the NSA Blunt Sports Talk. See you next time. Peace.